mindset helps you realize your potential from Corday. You know what I'm saying? My boy Corday said he about to teach us how a high level mindset helps you realize your potential. You know what I'm saying? That's definitely it. That's the shit I'm, t I'm trying to... I need some of that. How's everybody doing today? Energy. So, for those of you who may... Bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Before we get to it, bro, this nigga had a lisp. I, I couldn't fuck with him because he had a lisp, bro. Like his music, I ain't fuck with it. <laughs> it was something about the list, bro. I'm sorry. Not know who I am, which is probably the vast majority of you all. This look like a GTA character, boy. Look, he got the dreads. He got the big coat on. He on stage. I'm trying to think. Is those Alexander McQueen's? What is those? Those look like Jays for real. I'm Jays. <laughs> My name is Corday. Um, I'm 24 years old. I was born in Raleigh, North Carolina, but was raised majority in Suitland, Maryland, which made me who I am today. Um, I'm a hip hop artist. More specifically, uh, that boy said hip hop. I'm a hip hop artist. Is that what I do? Hip hop? Grammy nominated hip hop artist. <laughs> a quote unquote critically acclaimed world. Why he say, he, why he brag about the Grammy nom nominated though? I just noticed that, like, I peep, like, he bragged about the Grammy nominated. So if I get, if I get nominated to the Grammy, I get to brag and say that? Wow, that's crazy. Renowned B-list celebrity. <laughs> but to be honest, more like B-. minus. But again, you all can just call me Corday. And assume that I'm almost kind of a big deal because I am here doing a TED Talk. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, what does a 24-year-old rapper possibly have to say during a TED Talk? 24? Okay. Like, who cares what Ja Rule thinks, you know? But um, I'm here to talk about my mantra and my way of life that has gotten me this far and can hopefully take me a lot further on my journey as I'm just getting started. And that's the high-level mindset. Now, before I get into the details about the high-level mindset, I want to tell you about the original creator of the high level mindset. And that's my mom. And she doesn't even know it. Um, my mom had me when she was 16 years old. She was a single mom with all the odds. Damn, 16? 16, mama. Damn, why she look so old, though? Like, that means she's like 17 in this picture, but she look old as shit. Like, all that makeup needs to go. Stacked against her. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be rude. And yet, from an unbiased perspective, I like to say she did a pretty decent job. Okay. Um, we lived in some pretty terrible neighborhoods, man. Uh, I switched elementary schools about five different times. I remember one time her car had got stolen twice in one week. Damn. She overcame circumstance, obstacles, her environment, and negativity. As I watched... Our living situations will continue to get better and better as the years went by. Now, that's high level. Now, the high level mindset wasn't something that she directly taught me or purposefully instilled in me, but something I learned simply by observation. The high level mindset is a philosophy. It's a wavelength to apply to your everyday thoughts of regiment. The high level mindset will be of great service to you especially when things aren't going as planned. These trying times that I speak of, or life testers, if you may, are what truly make it man and woman. Actually, scratch that. How we handle these lifetimes, these trying times, or life testers, is what decides a person's destiny, which brings me to step one of the high-level mindset. And that's all... Yo, that was, that, that was hard. I like that. What do you say? He says, how we handle these lifetimes. <clears throat> handle these lifetimes, these trying times, or life these trying times, life testers, is what decides a person's destiny. That's what decides a person's destiny, bro. That shit is so deep. <laughs> the 
This shit is so deep. Which brings me to step one of the high level mindset. And that's always remain positive, no matter what people or life may throw at you. Okay. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background about myself. Um, funny enough, I was actually voted most likely to be famous in both middle school and in high school. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. I'm sorry, I haven't always been this good looking. It takes a little bit of time. Um, my goal was to graduate high school and to immediately blow up, but that didn't happen. So I went to college. And as soon as I went to college, boy, did life hit me hard. Um, within the first couple weeks of school, one of my best friends that I called my brother had gotten sentenced to 24 years in prison. I had gotten detained for driving with a suspended license, amongst God, other damn. things like having a pound of weed in the car before it was legal. Ugh. And my grandmother had passed. But why is he speaking like that? This nigga got the... And he trying to really tell this motherfucker. He practiced this motherfucking story. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. Ain't no way. Like, that was just extra, like, extra. Right here. Uh, like, he hit the smile. Uh, like, he practiced that. And my grandmother had passed. Tongue out. <laughs> passed. Not to mention, I was already a terrible student with horrific grades and a broke teenager. And I wonder why my grades were so bad. <laughs> now that's just disrespectful. I wasn't even trying to hide it. Thanks. Um, but on top of all of these things, what was really the breaking point for me was that I had released a mixtape that I worked on the entire summer and they had only gotten 200 downloads. Now, my previous two mixtapes got 2,000 downloads. So I was not happy with the regression, <laughs> to say the least. Um, again, this almost pushed me to the brink of quitting and insanity. But the high-level mindset made me think, man, these misfortunes are just going to make my triumph story a lot cooler. I, I use this as fuel to the fire, um, motivation, if you will. Um, it made me think. You know, life is just a book. Not every chapter is going to be perfect, but it's about how it ends, which brings me to the second step of the high-level mindset. Always be intentional with your desires. Know exactly what you want. In 2018, I created a vision board. At the beginning of 2018, excuse me, I created a vision board. And I'm proud to say that with the high-level mindset, Within one year, I almost accomplished everything on here. Y'all can clap for that. <laughs> so I encourage you to just write down your goals. Starting off your day with reading your goals and dreams aloud gives you a boost of positive energy. This energy can be transmuted into something we call faith. Faith in your ability, faith in yourself, faith in the higher power, or take you to places you couldn't even imagine. Know exactly what you want. How can you be high level if you don't know what high level is to you? And in order to do all these things, it brings me to the third step of the high level mindset, discipline. Growing up, discipline was always taught in such a lame way that I always tried my best to avoid it. But where motivation is low, that's where discipline kicks in. Anybody who's done something noteworthy with their lives all have one thing in common, and that's discipline. Mastering the art of discipline will literally change your life. I witnessed this close hand by studying a friend up close. This friend of mine noticed that every time he stopped doing drugs and alcohol, something good would happen. He felt as though this was a divine calling from heaven above to haul all his vices. Now, can anyone tell me the three main vices of a 19-year-old college student? It's sex, alcohol, and drugs, if y'all didn't know that already. Um, 
And after the first six months of him stopping his vices, I seen his whole life change completely. Again, he thought this was a sign that maybe God doesn't want me to do drugs, drink alcohol, or have sex. But no, that's not the case. Thank you. <laughs> he was just simply learning discipline without knowing. All right, I have a confession to make. So he just tried to explain discipline as he seen that his mans do it and he said, no, that's not the case. Hold on, I'm confused. You too, good thing. It's like, he was saying that he was going to explain discipline in a cool way, but it wasn't really cool. I feel like he tried to get the cool from the joys, drugs, alcohol, and sex joke. I feel like he tried to do a little joke right there to like explain discipline that way. Because I feel like I can explain discipline that way. But um, anyways, and cooler. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want to make this entire TED talk about myself, I lied and said that this is a friend. <laughs> it was actually me. <laughs> okay. And then he said, that's not the case. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> okay. He's funny. He's right. He's decent. Now, a cheat code to ensure that you're staying disciplined to whatever you're striving for is to prime your environment for success. Your habits are based on your habitat. And the main product of your habitat are the people in your life which brings me to a very important step of the high-level mindset. So? The fourth step, to be exact. Remove all negative people out of your life immediately. Man. I think it said immediately. Whew. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anybody that's semi-doubtful or naysaying, get them out. If you're talking about your dreams and goals and they give small, sarcastic remarks, boot them. Damn. Just an all-around negative Nancy, kick them out of there, man. Does anybody in the audience know somebody that's like that? Please raise your hand. I need y'all to do me a favor. Pull your phones out and block them immediately. No, 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 I'm dead serious. Don't let someone else's negativity cancel out your light, for it can temporarily get in the way of you achieving what's owed to you. You are a product of those who you hang around. Let's make sure we're hanging around other positive, high-level individuals. Now, thank you. Now, I like to consider myself a master of this high-level stuff. I mean... I am here for a reason, right? <laughs> but um, that doesn't mean things always go my way. Even now, I just recently released uh, my sophomore album from a bird's eye view that I spent two full years creating. My debut album, The Lost Boy, was met with massive critical acclaim and success, and, a lot of, and I had a lot of pressure on myself to outdo myself. And in my eyes and in the eyes of many, I did. I had huge expectations for this album. But when it finally released and it wasn't received as well as I hoped, I completely broke down. I did my fasting. I stayed positive. I wrote down my dreams and goals. I was disciplined. I was doing this every day to make sure that this big moment that it was leading up to that would change the entire world would go through perfectly. Oh, shit. But that didn't happen. Damn. I did not meet the expectations that I had set for myself, that the world had set for me. And this is the first time as a major artist that I had received mixed reviews of my art. And again, it broke me down, man. Um, I became unmotivated. I started overindulging in things that I'm not proud of. I was almost thinking about canceling my upcoming tour. Damn. I was in a very dark place. But then I heard this Yiddish proverb that ASAP Rocky actually told me about at a most important time, and I'm sure he didn't even know it. 
It's we plan and God laughs. And that made me think the high level mindset is not a recipe for perfection, but a commitment to honoring your potential and what you have to offer the world. Don't let your small failures make you lose sight of your bigger picture. I'll leave you all with this. We only have one life to live. 110 years maximum if you're a health guru and you have great health insurance. <laughs> How are you going to maximize your time on this earth? Do you want your name to be remembered long after you're gone? The high-level mindset is about doing everything that you put your hands on at the highest level that you're capable of doing. Okay. Think of your life as a book. Again, each chapter isn't going to be perfect, but how do you want your story to end? In anguish, a bunch of what ifs, or leaving a legacy? I choose legacy, the high level way. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> My thoughts on that was it kind of like scared me a little bit because like I'm like, damn, what if I drop my album, right? And that bitch just, you know what I'm saying? Because like, I think I'm the hardest nigga out, you feel me? And then that just be, oh, nah, nigga, you suck, you feel me? You really, you really garbage for real. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> for real? For real, bro, I'm garbage. <laughs> bro, for real, I'm garbage. Like, for real. Like, damn. All right, fuck you too then, though. You feel me? I'm going to still put out music because, nigga, I'm that nigga. I'm Blue Bill. I don't know. That's just how I feel like I would feel at the end of the day. Like, I'm going to be like, okay, cool. You feel me? And I'm going to keep on working, nigga. I'm going to keep on working. I'm going to keep on working. I'm going to keep on working. And then you're going to be like, damn, that nigga Blue Bill ain't never stopped working. That nigga was just in that bitch going crazy. He ain't give a fuck, nigga. He just like, he just kept on working. He ain't really give a fuck. He just kept. <laughs> hey, that, hey, that's that nigga Blue Bill. Yeah, nigga, that's how them niggas going to be. I mean, this dramatic interest wasn't fun.